Hi students, uh, let's continue with the cascading style sheet property. In the previous video, I explained about the cascading style sheet borders. Now let's see the margins. How you are going to use the margin property in your cascading styles and what the margins will be uh, look. What's the use of the margins in the style sheet? The cascading style sheet margin property or use it to create space around the element outside of an, any defined board. So this point you have to be remember. The margins, it's, it, it explains the difference between the margin and the padding. Okay, the padding is nothing but it, in, it uh, affects on inside the uh, elements that are present in the border. Whereas the margins outside of any defined borders. The cascading style sheet has properties for specifying the margin for each side of an element. So, uh, whatever that side, it is the left side. So, this is the top side. Okay, let's take this is a page. In the page, this was the top side. Okay, and right, bottom, left. The page left, right, top and the bottom. The cascading style sheet has a property for specifying the margins for each side of an element. Suppose I want to display one of the paragraph here. So where I have to be uh, display that paragraph in the center or in the left or in the right or in the bottom that can be represented by using the margin property. So the margin properties are margin top, margin right, margin bottom and margin left. So, all the margin properties have the value. So, whatever the property you have taken, those properties having values. Okay. Now, let us take, suppose, it, let's take it is an auto. The margin top is an auto. So, auto means browser calculates the margin. So, no need to mention the pixel size or the size of a page. You just need to write auto there. Then, the uh, by default, the browser can select that. And you can use the value as a length means the margin left is equal to length like that. So it specifies the margin in pixel, px, pt, cm. So I'll explain about these length in the coming videos. Next, percentile. Specifies in percentage of width of containing element. Inherit. Margin should be inherited from the parent element. So these are the different values you can be used in the properties. Let, let me take one of the example here. And one more thing you have to be remembered. So whatever the values that you are taking for the property, that value maybe you can take the negative value also. In the case of margins only, the negative values are allowed. But if you go for the padding, the negative values will not allowed. That I'll explain in the next video. It's uh, Let's take one of the example. Say different margins for all four sides of a paragraph element. So whatever the paragraph element that is there, so in between uh, some elements are there and close the paragraph. So these element, whatever the paragraph element is there, that has to be uh, placed on the web page by using the margins, the four, all four sides. So let's take, it is a page, the paragraph element, let me take that paragraph element as the welcome. So, this message has to be print. The margin top is 100 pixels. So, just leave the 100 pixel size. And the margin bottom is also, you just leave the 100 pixel size. Okay. And the margin right, let's take, you just take 150 pixels. And the left, you take just 80 pixels. And here, you are going to uh, print the message like, welcome. That is a paragraph. So, the statement that has to be appeared where? In the page. So, by using the margin property. Okay. Thank you.